everybody, this is Mr. Matthew here again, and I am going to be talking this video about responses to the environment. Specifically, how do uh, individual species or how do populations respond to changes in the environment that allow them to have a better chance to survive and reproduce and ultimately have their genes passed on to the next generation. So here we go. So one of the first things to know is that I want to explain how the behavioral or physiological responses of an organism relate to changes in internal or external environment. Now, the first thing to note is that uh, there needs to be some sort of signal that comes and causes an organism to respond. And so this is found in everything from large multicellular organisms to individual single-celled organisms. The ability to receive a signal and then respond to that signal is going to be something that we find in all living things. So what we can see here an example are two behaviors one is called the effect of a chemoattractant some sort of chemical is detected in the environment obviously the closer you are to that signal the stronger that signal is and possibly the stronger the reaction is going to be similarly a reaction could happen where you're going to be repelled and again closer you are to that signal, the stronger the signal will be. So you can think about this about yourself. You know, you walk in the house and you smell something that smells really good. You know, when I think of my house, I think of chocolate chip cookies or baking. And man, I want to walk right to the kitchen. That's a chemo attractant. Or, you know, you're walking along outside and all of a sudden you, you smell a skunk and as you walk you, you're you're noticing that you're the path you're walking on the skunk smell that starts to get worse the chemo repellent would say avoid this smell and you would walk the other direction so organisms respond to changes in their environment through behavioral or physiological mechanisms. One of the most obvious ones of this to me is the idea of what we call phototaxis by plants. So you've probably seen this phenomenon that you have plants tend to open their leaves and grow those leaves towards the sun. In fact, there are multiple videos out there. If you go onto YouTube, you can actually watch plants change their shape and have their leaves track the sun throughout the day. There are many species that do this. But just simply, if you have a plant growing, you'll actually notice that as the seedlings start growing, they'll start growing in the direction of the sun. This is because the plant is able to detect the external stimuli, in this case, the light, and therefore is able to modify the growth of cells, particularly on the far side, the shaded side, causing them to elongate and cause the plant to curve and have it so that it is heading directly towards that source of light. This is a response to an environmental condition through both physiological and a form of behavioral means by something that we don't usually think of as very motile, yet we still see that behavior. Now, organisms exchange information with one another in response to internal changes and external cues, which change behavior. And so what we notice is that uh, not only can a, you know, we get a trigger stimulus that leads to some sort of physical reflex, and then we have some sort of response individually. But within a population, you will hear something like a bird that will start singing a message out that will be sending signals to other birds. This could be something like a warning signal where it's warning other individuals or we have the case of bees, bees doing their bee dance, their buzzing and their bee dance, where they show the other bees in that hive, hey, this is where I found pollen and nectar so that we can bring that back to our hive. So these are examples of how organisms both get information and respond in individually, but also can then send that information to other individuals within their population. So some behaviors affect the overall fitness and then may contribute to the success of the population. So there's many instances where it's very obvious that an individual has done something and it allows them to survive and reproduce. So again, avoiding a predator, finding a food source. If you get a stimulus and then you either move towards or away from something that is either beneficial or harmful to you, that's very obvious. But in a population sense, we have examples where you have something like this prairie dog here. And what this prairie dog has done is that it has observed a predator and Prairie dogs are known to have very specific uh, warning howls for the different types of predators that could be coming towards them, and they will make all of this noise. Now, that might seem a little counterintuitive. You are an animal, you see a predator, and all of a sudden you stand up and you make the giant loud noise. Why would you possibly do this? Well, it turns out that this behavior is thought to be a form of altruism, or maybe better say, this is possibly a form of altruism. And the idea here is that this individual, while they are 
calling out their warning, it turns out that they are likely related to most of the other members of their population. And so while they are themselves calling this out, it turns out that their, you know, their cousins, their aunts, their possibly children, the other members of their family also share a certain percentage of their genes. And because they're you know, siblings and their other members of their grouping share a certain percentage of their genes. This behavior, if warning all of the other members of their population, actually helps through an altruistic behavior. The other members of the population survive, possibly leading to a fraction of their genes getting passed on to that next generation. So this could be a way that they can cooperate and share the responsibility of protecting genes, even if it's not their individual ability to survive and reproduce, the population's genes will be passed on to that next generation. All right, so obviously individuals can act on information and communicate to others. If you've ever noticed that, particularly in the fall, as birds are flying south for the winter or migrating back uh, during the spring, it is not uncommon to see them flying in a particular formation. How do they know to do that? Well, they are able to communicate to others in their population. And because they're communicating to others, they are able to work together to accomplish a collective task. We see this in large organisms. We will also see this in single-celled organisms as well. Other examples of communications that occur are organisms sending signals that say, hey, I have the ability to uh, reproduce successfully. So the peacock is a classic example of that. Males of this species have very colorful, very detailed tail feathers, which they will display in mating rituals. The ability to have this very ornate, elaborate tail is a visible signal of fitness because there's a cost to being able to produce such an elaborate tail. So it is a visible display of fitness. The Dung beetles um, are also known to do this, and they do so by actually making balls of dung, which serve as gifts for potential mates, and they will roll these over. And so while humans probably would not be wooed by a giant ball of dung, the ability to produce this giant ball of dung and roll it towards a mate serves as a purpose that is going to show fitness to others of that species and will be a form of uh, signifying that they are worthy of passing on their genes. So this is a form of sexual selection that we see. We also know that communication through visual, audible, tactile, electrical, chemical signals will indicate the ability to dominate over others, to find food, to establish territory, to ensure reproductive success. These are all examples of, of ways that uh, during mating, usually, typically, the male is trying to show off in order to attract a female, in order to pass on those genes. And we can see a lot of these behaviors. Birds are commonly used in this case, but, but animals do all sorts of examples of communicating about their fitness in order to try to attract mates and therefore passing on the genes. Remember, evolution is all about surviving and reproducing and passing on those genes. So if you can do something that shows, hey, I've not only survived, but my genes are, are very fit, then they are going to ensure reproductive success. Now, as I mentioned before, natural selection favors innate and learned behavior that increase the survival and reproductive fitness. Um, and I mentioned this earlier that the, the bees have this ability to go out and find food. And so there is going to be some sort of innate behavior. But they're, when they have found food and they bring it back to the hive, they have the ability to communicate that information to others in the hive. So the ability to find the food super uh, super degree of fitness that's involved there. But to be able to communicate that and for others to be able to respond to those signals through their dances is a way of learning a behavior that will increase both your individual survivability, but also the survivability in this case of the hive or the population that is involved. And then we also can see that there are uh, cooperation behaviors that increase fitness. And so this is seen by pack hunting, for example, and both the fitness of the individual and the survival of the, the, the group are going to be strongly influenced by this. So in this instance, you see a group of wolves surrounding um, a buffalo. And in this case, the cooperative hunting abilities of this pack are going to increase both the individual and group survivability um, as they do so. So hunting behavior works in this case uh, to help increase the fitness um, and passing on of genes because it'll be key to survival by getting enough energy. 
All right. So that's a lot of different examples of how um, we see uh, communication uh, taking place and the response to signals in the environment. Uh, I hope that was helpful and I'll talk to everybody soon.